Hi, everybody. Welcome to part three of our interview with Jesse Ventura. What is your theory on why we have Trump? Why we have Trump? Yes. Uh, Trump, we have Trump because actually the Bernie and the Trump supporters were the same. And I know that sounds shocking, but they were. Just that one group was highly conservative and the other group was highly progressive liberal. But they wanted the same thing. They wanted Washington cleaned out. And that's the prevailing thought out there. You know what I just learned today? My producer at RT, a Russian guy, you know, he's got the Russian accent. He tells me when I'm doing the show today, he said, Governor, do you know that 50% of the emails this show gets are people asking you to run for president in 2020? Oh, Jesse, that would be fantastic if you did that. Well, you know, I, I'm flattered over that, but you see, uh, th- what I'm getting to is that people were sick of Washington. You know, Donald Trump said he was going to drain the swamp. The problem is he lied. He put the old relics back into the swamp, like Bolton and all these other old char- warmongering characters from years past. He didn't drain the swamp. He just brought back the parasites that were there a decade earlier. And so... The thing is, that's what America was looking for. When these people tell me, run, Jesse, run, it's because they know that I'm not attached to special interest. They know that I'm going to tell them the truth as I see it, and I'm going to speak, speak freely. The problem with Trump is he doesn't tell the truth ever. Yeah, the problem with Trump is that he's not doing what he said. He drained the swamp yeah. and, he, and he found his cabinet at the bottom of it. That's what happened. So, well, and he, he, he has become a Republican. Yes. He yeah. start, you know, I remember when I won my election and Donald flew all the way to Minnesota to meet with me. And he did ex- a lot of things he copied right out of my playbook. Like when Hillary, here's a big mistake Hillary made. When Hillary was out raising money and going to fundraisers, Donald Trump, I didn't raise money. I only raised $300,000 to become the governor of Minnesota. And uh, I made more money actually doing the job than I spent to get it. Huh. Nobody, nobody can say that but me. But anyway, here's, Trump saw what I did. Instead of raising money, he, he held rallies. That's what I did. You hold rallies. You go out to the people. They told me in Minnesota, don't go to the colleges. They don't vote. That's exactly where I went. Are you kidding me? The college gets to hear Jesse the Body Ventura? The kids turned out in droves, and the day I won, the paper the next day, Ventura wins. Throngs of young voters come out. Throngs, they said. You know, it was in the Minneapolis paper, the quote from it. Yeah. And so that's what Trump did. He went to these rallies. He came to Minnesota. He goes out to an airport hangar. 10,000 people show up. Well, I got news for you. If they show up for a rally, they're voting for you. Yep, that is correct. Uh, Hillary. And so Hillary's off with all the money people. She's making millions, getting donations, while Trump's out there looking at the regular people. Yes, you are correct. I mean, by the way, by the way, you want the ultimate thing that no one talks about that could dismiss the entire Russian investigation? What is this simple fact? We don't elect our president. The Electoral College does, and they're not bound by anything. Yeah, they could have did whatever. So, unless the Russians got to the Electoral College, how could they interfere in our election? That's a great point. Nobody ever brings that up. I thought you were going to... Oh, of course they don't. And how come the Democrats aren't yelling to get rid of the Electoral College? Uh, That's a big... I've been saying that all over. You think that she would be campaigning to get rid of the Electoral College because it's... I have been. I think the thing's ridiculous. It's an elitist system designed to where... You know, I found it interesting. Vladimir Putin's interview with Oliver Stone. When they accuse... Vladimir points out, in our assembly, we have four different parties represented. You have only two. And and Putin says, when I win the presidency, I win by the popular vote. The people don't even elect your president. Yeah, uh, 
people are so uh, ignorant about this kind of stuff in the United States. And it's because the press never talks about this. That's why shows like yours is important. And because it actually talks about stuff like this. You saw what happened just now at the White House Correspondents Dinner, where the comedian actually told the truth about what's happening in Washington, that the press is actually making a lot of money off of Donald Trump. And they all love Donald Trump for all the money he's bringing them. And then she said, you know, Flint still doesn't have clean water. None of those things were mentioned in their critiques. They all talked about the most superficial thing in the world, that she might have insulted a warmonger's uh, fe- her feelings. Who cares? Right? Exactly. I'll tell you this, and i got to wind it down now a little bit, but to all the people that listen to your show, and I'm probably speaking to the choir, that's the problem. But unless we derail this war machine, this military industrial complex that has taken over our country that Eisenhower warned us about, unless we stop them and stop them fast, we are going to fall because empires that rely on war, when they fall, they fall quick and they fall hard. And this country and its citizens are going to be sitting there when all this falls apart because military cannot support an economy. You, and our economy is now totally dominated by military because we've let all the jobs, the manufacturing and all that leave. So the only thing we produce now basically is military weapons. And when that runs out, our economy is going to go to shambles. China is going to take over completely and we're going to be a destitute country, and all these people here are going to look around and say, gee, how did this happen? So how do we fight back against the military-industrial complex? Stop electing people, that uh, uh, Democrats and Republicans, who both could take you to war. Your example is Hillary Clinton. She says the worst vote she ever did as a senator was voting for the Iraq war, and all the other Democrats joined her. Yes, I know. Do you see them ever go, the one budget that can't be cut, defense, which they should call it war because it's not defense, it's offense. So people don't really. can't be cut. People don't really. You can't run today. You cannot run for office and say you're going to cut spending like all these people that are telling Jesse Ventura to run. Well, I would come out and say I'm going to cut defense spending. Well, then the press would hammer that America is going to be unsafe because Jesse Ventura is going to cut defense spending when we spend more money on defense than the other 23 biggest nations in the world do combined. So people don't realize that we're spending 40 percent more now in our military than we were at the height of the Iraq war. We were spending 500 billion on our military at the height of the Iraq war. Now we're spending 700 billion a year. That's a 40 percent increase that could have paid for Bernie's free college. That could end student debt. That could do uh, an infrastructure, a job plan. It could have done a million things that people are actually crying for in America. Instead, we put it in bombs and we're going to kill other people and create more terrorists with it. That's our plan. And, and, and the economy here is going to destruct and destroy it because of it. I, I agree with so you. So when it all collapses, go look at George Bush and Dick Cheney and thank them. Because they were the two, like I've said publicly, George W. Bush is the worst president in my lifetime. Now, Trump may be getting close, but he still ain't as bad as George W. Bush. Because George W. Bush invaded a country on lies, overthrew that country, occupied it, and destroyed it. That's what the Nazis did. That's what the communists did in the old days. And now George Bush and Dick Cheney do it. And here's two guys that wouldn't even serve. Cheney had five deferments from the military. (laughs) And yet, he'll send your kids to war. But he wouldn't go. George Bush wouldn't go. He had that fraudulent enlistment that was a joke. He never was in the military, truly. What do you make? Because what he you, got out early. Nobody gets out early. So, so Jesse, before you go, what do you make of that? George Bush has now been completely rehabilitated, and his, no, his people now like him again. Ellen takes selfies with him. He goes on the talk shows. Everybody, uh, you know, gives him a tongue bath. And now Richard Painter is running for that Senate seat in Minnesota. It was Bush's ethics lawyer. He's now running as a Democrat in Minnesota. What? Uh, uh, how do these people? 
people get rehabilitated like this? Because that's how the system works for them. Why do you think Bush could do all the things he did? Then he lays low for 10 years, and now they'll bring him back, and they'll be naming schools after him and Dick Cheney. Yeah. These two guys, let me be blunt with you. Cheney and Bush are war criminals. I agree with you 100%. Because they said torture was okay. They advocated it. They allowed it to happen, and they knew it was happening. That is a war crime. So Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld are all guilty of war crimes. And until we could prosecute them for those crimes, the United States of America stands for nothing. Um, can you just, before you go, tell me what you think a patriot is? Well, a patriot is someone like me who speaks out and holds our government's feet to the fire. Because our forefathers, like Thomas Jefferson, told us that this great experiment would never succeed unless, unless the population is vigilant, unless the population pays attention and holds their feet to the fire when they make bad decisions. You catch them on it. You expose them for it if there's corruption. You whistleblow them for lack of a better term, whistleblow them. Today, whistleblowers go to jail. And it's all, they've taken over. And to me, a patriot is someone who questions and holds their government to such a high standard. And it is not someone who goes along and gets along. And let me say one final thing. Here's on a fun note. This stuff about the flag and Colin Kaepernick. Okay. There isn't one law in the United States of America that says you have to stand and salute the flag. There is not one law that requires you to do that. Yet, the, mo the biggest law that we have in the land, which is the First Amendment to the Constitution of freedom of speech, allows you to burn that flag if you want to. Uh, I agree. It's the, the, the flag, ironically. Well, think about that for a minute. The, the they let that sink in a little bit. You know, patriotism, government has to earn patriotism. Government cannot mandate patriotism. And forcing people to stand for a Pledge of Allegiance or salute the flag, that's forced patriotism. I think it was Mark Twain who said, I support my country always and my government when it deserves it. Exactly. Some very bright people we ought to be reading about and listening to what they have to say. Mark Twain, Thomas Jefferson, a lot of those people. They knew what the pitfalls would be. And the point is, you know, and, and you know what? He took a knee. In religion, if you do that, that's considered exceptional, isn't it? It's considered reverent. Yeah. So why with the flag? Is it the opposite? You tell me, because it messes up that war rally they have right before a football game. That's why. Exactly. It messes up. And you notice, I'll finish with this. You notice the story that got buried after one day. What? There was a story that came out. John McCain actually exposed it. He exposed it was in the defense bill that our tax dollars are being paid to the NFL owners so that they honor the veterans. Yeah. We're yeah. paying for that. So when you see these big veterans things on the NFL, that's propaganda. Grab your wallet because you just paid an owner who you already built a stadium for. Now you're paying them to honor our veterans. Ha! Huh. Yeah. So they're not doing it out of a sense of patriotism, the NFL or the owners. They're doing it because they're being paid to do it. Well, they're not now because they got caught. Yeah. So now they said they're going to donate the money to veteran causes. <laughs> See, they got caught. But yeah. prior to that, and I sat back, and I'm a veteran, and I sat back, and to me, it was like, how could you insult me anymore? And now when I watch the NFL and they do one of these big patriotic things, I sit back and I go, gee, how much did you get paid to do that? Yes, exactly. Well, we we should be cynical now, for sure, of our government, uh, especially when it comes to war. We're in seven wars right now, and people still don't care. It's uh, You know why? Because they're not feeling any pain. Here's what's got to happen. We've got to implement a war tax. That the minute the country goes to war, a tax...
tax is kicked in so that we have so that we pay for it and we can't put it on the debt because they put the war on the debt so nobody feels any stress over the war. I'll tell you what else too. Here, I'll run for president for a moment. If Jesse Ventura runs for president, here's a law that I want enacted. Uh, if the president or any member of Congress or the Senate votes to go to war, they have to pre-designate prior to that vote a family member who must then begin serving military service. Uh, that 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 would uh, that would put an end to a lot of wars. So that's why that'll never well, happen. Well, that way they got a dog in the fight. Then right, right, right. The only guy. The only guy in modern times that I can think of that had a dog in the fight was Vice President Biden. Uh, that's right. You are correct. Uh, yeah, they, he lost his son because of the burn pits. Yeah. Jesse Ventura. Jesse's a veter, a vet, Ventura's Marijuana Manifesto is now out in paperback. You can catch The World According to Jesse on RT every Friday at 7.30 and 10 p.m. Eastern. A true patriot, one of my favorite guys in the world, and I hope he runs for president. Jesse Ventura, thanks for being our guest. Well, I got an invite to the Green Party thing this summer. I don't know if they're setting me up when I get there. I'm not sure, but... I'll tell it to you this way. If I did run, I would run under the Green Party banner. Fantastic. Yeah, they already have some infrastructure in place. Yep, and yeah. I'd need that. So, uh, you know, I'll tell you, we'll have some fun here. Remember when I said I'd run, but I wanted Howard Stern as my running mate? Yes. Well, that I was serious about that. Let me explain why, because everybody right away went, oh, what a joke, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Here's why. And Stern wouldn't do it. The old Howard would have did it. Yeah, I know. Hampton Howard of today, he's too rich now. He yeah. won't rock the boat anymore. But the old Howard would have did it, and here's what it would have did. If Howard would have ran with me, serious radio does not fall under the FCC. So therefore, we could have used his show as a daily platform to not only raise money, but get our message out all for nothing. Yeah. You now, mean, what would, if Howard Stern went on his show and told everybody I'm running for vice president with Jesse, I need 25 bucks from everybody. How much money you think he could raise? Yeah. You'd certainly be the, you'd be the biggest fundraiser. See, there was a method to my madness. And then the final thing is this. I needed Howard for an insurance policy. Because rest assured, if Jesse Ventura were to win the presidency, I would be assassinated. That's what I thought. Uh... I believe that. I truly believe that. So you need a running mate like Howard Stern for insurance, because if they assassinate you, that means they get Howard as president. <laughs> 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 So it might make him say, well, you know what? We better stick out Jesse Finster and not kill him. <laughs> <laughs> well, fingers so crossed. There, there's always, a, Jimmy, there's always a method to my madness, you I, know. I hear, yeah, I know there's always a reason. There's always a reason. <laughs> Jesse, thanks again for being so uh, uh, generous with your time. And thanks for coming on the show. And I hope to get to meet you in person soon. Or maybe I'll see you this summer at that Green well, Convention. hopefully I'll see you sometime maybe this summer. Thank you for, for subbing for me on RT. And I encourage everyone, please, if you want to hear the unfiltered news, and let me make this shameless plug. At RT, we do not do pre-interviews with anyone. All these other major medias, whoever they are, they all do pre-interviews. That's so they can censor things. That's the sole reason for doing a pre-interview, so that they know what you're going to talk about and they can keep you away from talking about certain subjects they don't want to deal with. At RT, we never do a pre-interview. Fantastic. Um, yes, and I, I never get censored. Imagine that. The Russians don't censor me. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It is. We live in an upside down world today. We really do. Um, and uh, I, th I appreciate you still doing that show and taking all the slings and arrows you're taking and sticking your chin out and telling the truth and bucking the corporate media system. Uh, you know, I salute you. 
Well, I'm ready to retire in a few years, so I can do it now. I'm old. Take care, Jimmy, and we'll talk again. Okay, Jesse. Bye-bye. Our next Live Jimmy Dore show is July 1st in Portland, Oregon. There's a link for tickets for all of our live shows right there. And if you can remember, please take a moment to make sure you're subscribed to the show. It only takes a second. You probably think you're subscribed, but you probably aren't. Just make sure you're subscribed. Click that bell so they send you a notice when we drop a video. Otherwise, they won't tell you. And if you become a premium member or a Patreon, we give you hours of bonus material every week. And we do a live chat every Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time where you can ask us questions and we'll answer them. Plus, we're on Steam It. We're steaming it right now.